What's good? It's Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. This is not another damn podcast. Another damn podcast. Presented by our damn selves. Episode 294. 294. Yeah. Tri State. Let's go, baby. 294. Side <laughs> town thing right there. Or that's not Chicago. That's right. 294 is not Chicago. Not Chicago, yeah. Part of yeah, show the map. Yeah. Chicago, not Chicago. 294 is in the Plains. <laughs> Park Ridge. <laughs> Well, in the south end, you got um like Homewood and <laughs> South Holland, yeah. <laughs> Lansing, yes, <laughs> which we once lived right by the two ninety four. Right. Two ninety four, yeah. Well, Chicago, that's the Chicago metropolitan area. That's what we'll call that. <laughs> This is a Chicago Metro. It's not Chicago proper, but it's Chicago Metro. So there you go. So that's oh, how we, we include y'all. Yeah, Chicago Metropolitan. <laughs> you can tell who lives outside of that line because uh, whoever gets mad when everybody posts that map like Chicago. <laughs> it's what we talking about division between us and the. Y'all play too much. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, I just know. made that you face. Must, you must live outside of the line. <laughs> 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 it's all the fun. It's all good. It's all good. MLK weekend as well, too. So yeah. Shout mm-hmm. out to um, how um Dr. King, how old was he? I don't, I don't when was he by well, I don't know. Was it 33? Uh, I think 33. He... So he would have been um 90. What's that? Yeah, I think so. 33, yeah. King would have been 90. Yeah. Hmm. I think he was born in 33, if I'm not mistaken. So I think so, yeah. 90th birthday. I can't even wow. imagine Dr. King is 90 years old. <laughs> Remember they did a Boondocks episode where he survived. Oh, and he survived, yeah. And... So he would have been oh, he would have been in his 60s then, because I was like 20 years ago. So right. Mm-hmm. A 90-year-old Dr. King can't even imagine. <laughs> mm-hmm. So that's um something right there. I think he was. Um, Let's look that up. Was it 33? He might, he might have been... It might not have been 33. I think he was born in 33. I'm not sure. I don't think so. Let's look that up. 1929. 29. Okay. So add a couple more years. So 94? Yeah. 94. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> 94 year old king that's even crazier than a 90 year old king. I don't know where I got <laughs> I mean, somebody was born in 33. I don't remember who. <laughs> Shout out to whoever was born in 1933, <laughs> according to the odds, man. Damn it. <laughs> but beautiful weather this weekend in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago is. I don't, I'm not going to complain. I'm um, getting unseasonably warm. The winter, yeah, winter in Chicago. <laughs> So it's been means, like 40s, upper 40s. It's cracked right. 50 a couple of days. Yeah. They said like for like 18 days in a row or something, it's been over the, what is supposed to be over the average temp. And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> it's and it doesn't seem to be slowing down. I mean, I've looked, I said, I'll take it. Not I've I'll looked and I've seen the weather for the next two weeks and it's still, it's nothing, it's nothing dipping down. So keep our fingers crossed yeah because you know i get to groundhog day and then if the groundhog is the shell we just have to get <laughs> see <laughs> what the groundhog says <laughs> now with bill murray and then what's his name phil what's his Pux, Pux to Tommy phil Pux to Tommy. Phil, Pux to Tommy phil there you go <laughs> like what's his name <laughs> you do i was trying to say <laughs> so the last time that bill murray and harold Ramis worked together like yeah the ground, the team, yeah, had been together since Stripes, mm-hmm. and then I think Groundhog Day was their last movie working together. Yeah. So, um, if you know, uh, OGs, look them up. Yeah, that's some. Um, yeah, yeah, Ghostbusters. Yeah, they um, Ghostbusters yeah. is still iconic. Ghostbusters, yeah, <laughs> Stripes was my shit. That's why. <laughs> I like Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, enjoying my weekend. Definitely watch some good television. Babe, always um, a suggestion. Suggestions. <laughs> this time, um, The Banker. Have you seen the movie called The Banker? 
I have not. Isn't it based on like a true event? Yeah, isn't it two black Sam, dudes? Sam, Sam Jackson, Jackson? And Anthony Mackie. And Anthony Mackie, right? Yeah, I saw the preview, but I didn't watch it. Yeah, but I know it's gonna probably be awesome because I like both of them as actors. I love both of them so. Nia Long plays um Anthony Mackie's wife. Yeah, so she's in it. it had a great cast. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, I know yeah. it's like the the two black people like they had, they had a real a mini real estate empire, but um yeah, with um they had a white dude as the, the white face as the face of their stuff. Yeah, which I mean back in the sixties, yeah, that's, that's the reality. I'm just yeah. that's the reality. That's Mm -hmm. You know, it... um, I won't spoil too, <laughs> even though it's a true story, but still, people might not know this story, so I'm not gonna spoil too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, they um, they started out in California, like they um, were taking that, uh, bought a bunch of um, properties in California, mm -hmm. then they got greedy, they decided they wanted to buy some banks in Texas. In Texas, ooh. 1960, oh, <laughs> you see my face, oh, yeah. Texas. And then that's where, um, yeah, that's where the movie really takes a turn. And I'll leave it at that. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. We buy a bank in Texas. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Texas and, yeah. <laughs> Yikes. But, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it tremendously. Highly recommended The Banker. It came uh, out. What's it streaming on? We, Apple TV. Okay, I have that. I have everything pretty much, so. Yeah. Let's try and see like what I can watch it. We got low key, got some nice shit. Like because last week I talked about the other joint with Sam Jackson. The um, was it called? Um, the last days of Ptolemy Gray. Yeah, Ptolemy Gray. Yeah, I'm Ptolemy. Yeah, the last days of Ptolemy Gray. He has a P, okay. a silent P at his name. That's why. I put it. So that's the one um uh, where Sam Jackson was. He played like a dementia patient. Dementia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, so Sam Jackson, he's getting his Apple TV on, apparently. <laughs> well, Sam Jackson is the highest grossing um, actor of all time. Actor, yeah, because think of all the movies he's been in, like all this stuff. So he was in Star Wars, he's been in all several Marvel, all the, Marvel, yeah, all right? the Marvels. Yeah, those two titles alone, which are both owned by Disney, by the way, boy, Star Wars and Marvel, like Disney pretty much owns everything at this point. And then he does stuff with Tarantino, you know, yeah. so. Pulp Fiction, Hateful Eight. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Those Django like, and Chain. Django, yeah. Three, <laughs> yeah. Three classics, matter of fact, yeah. Tarantino's like, <laughs> get that man his flowers. Like, Tarantino makes some hell, some movies. And then, <laughs> on that side, and then all the Spike Lee joints he's done, Sam Jackson. He's done some Spike Lee joints, so. Days. <laughs> Yeah, or, or the I, most iconic Gator. Fever. Gator. It's most iconic role, yeah. Want me to dance for you, mama? Gator. Was <laughs> yeah. Do the right thing is um the senior love daddy. Senior <laughs> love daddy. I still like them in school days. How come you college motherfuckers coming out here thinking that you can? <laughs> also, another class. Join um, A Time to Kill, another class. And I hope they burn in hell. That's a classic. <laughs> Like Sam Jackson. If I was on that jury. I would not have found him guilty either. <laughs> I would not guilty. Shout out Matthew McConaughey. You wouldn't even have to get a speech. <laughs> he wouldn't have to get a speech to me. I fix it if she's white. He never. He never I, saw, I saw him and I saw what they did. Test dollar. Okay, not guilty. I don't even need to hear. I don't even need to hear testimony. Not guilty. Mm -hmm. That would have been me on the jury. Oh yeah, Sam Jackson. That's my dude. When the first, his first ever role, I think, was Eddie Murphy Rock. Eddie Murphy, that dude line. That dude line. Eddie tells the dirty joke. Uh, little Eddie, which played by kid, his kid slash blood. And then he, he, all adults are like, and then the only one that laughs is Sam Jackson. Is like, he says, "You're a gawker." That says that dude line. The rest of them are just looking like, can you like that? <laughs> I bet if Khalil told a dirty joke, he'd be like, okay, <laughs> like, what was that? <laughs> you and Feast would probably be both. both I'd be, I'd be laugh. Both, I'd laugh both you and Feast would laugh. I know both of you guys would laugh. Like, I love that doo doo line. <laughs> 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 you and Feast would definitely laugh, both of y'all. <laughs> That's funny. We got to stage that, do a TikTok of that. <laughs> don't steal that shit now. <laughs> Somebody, yeah, anybody, if anybody watches this, though, we're gonna do a fucking <laughs> talk of that shit. <laughs> and I'm gonna do the Sam Jackson part. <laughs> <laughs> you be Eddie's mom. There you go. <laughs> Marcus be his dad. Khalil be Eddie. <laughs>
Ariana, 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 well, we'll get a quick one then. Happy birthday to you. You know, you got to play it every MLK. <laughs> Who has the longest intro? That song is not as long as the fucking Temptations Papa Will Roll is gone. That's like a two to four minute intro. Two to four minute intro. Doom, doom. <laughs> the boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Well, Dennis comes in and where's the third of September? <laughs> Classic. <laughs> yeah, but the happy birthday to you was long. Yep. Yeah. I wonder when it switched from the ha to happy birthday to um because it used to be the holiday holiday joint. Which shout out Tasha was talking about that she played that for her students. They didn't know who none of the people were on that, which is why it probably switched because like most of the talent on there is like it was dated, especially the rappers and shit. Yeah. It's like. But then you had like some heavy hitters like Whitney Houston's on there, El DeBarge. It's like it was some heavy hitters. It was um I don't know if you remember that the holiday joint with the posse joint it had on. Uh, but the rappers, the only ones mm -hmm. that I knew that were relevant to me in that era was like Run DMC and the Fat Boys. They had a bunch of cats from like the early eighties, like the like Grandmaster Melly Mel and Curtis Blow. Like cats say like, who when I was that age, I didn't give a shit about. They were the old heads even back then. They were always old to me. It's like, like Run was my guy and then the fat boys. Like everybody else was like, oh, you could have kept the rest of the rappers. <laughs> But like that was like the first merger of like I would say hip hop and R and B was that joint. That's the first time I remember hip hop and mm -hmm. R &B teaming up. And then, but like I said, that was all um, the joint. Even when I started in radio, that was the MLK record, and they switched to the Stevie Wonder one, which was the original one. The Stevie Wonder was the original. They switched back to it eventually. Yeah. <laughs> the Stevie Wonder joint, because he all uh, made that in honor, because like to try to get MLK Day legalized. That's the like, holiday, yeah. Which in '86 it finally became a national holiday. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I remember it being like a big deal. I remember it because I was little during that time, but I remember like mom, like you know, like, yes, yeah. you know, I remember it being like a big deal, like the adults around me all being, the, you and know, all the teachers in school were like talking. Yeah, about like I remember the adults being excited. Like I, said, I really didn't know. What was shout going out to Riggs, be that's whose class I was in. They, they, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was young, so I mean, I didn't really know what was going on, but I remember the adults being really pumped up for it, the adults being super excited about it. So the late Mrs. Rigsby, I remember her talking. And you remember she was pro blackity black, so she definitely was on that <laughs> when I'm the MLK thing. <laughs> <laughs> we got a couple of pro we black Mrs. teachers. Rigsby too, yes, so you know. We got a few pro, pro black pro teachers. Black <laughs> Miss Dickerson was probably my first pro blackity black. Ford. <laughs> we had a few. <laughs> we had a few, yeah. We had a few of them. And Rigsby, let's go. <laughs> yep. Very interesting weekend. Well, should we get into it? We didn't um. Yeah. We the pleasant trees. We've warmed up. Trees. We didn't warmed up a bit. Well, it passed. We talked about it last week. Um, it's official. Um, assault rifles are illegal in Illinois now. <laughs> JB did it. <laughs> they did that shit. <laughs> I talked about it. Yeah, they made some um uh, um adjustments to the bill. Like I said, the parts I was concerned about seems like they um they thought about cats like me. It's like because <laughs> mm -hmm. like with these pistols, it's like I'm like eh, twelve rounds. That's kind of yeah. And uh, yeah, so they um they said um the ten rounds is for um long guns like rifles like and then fifteen rounds for hand. Okay. Okay. Like fifteen, that's um, I'm comfortable with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's um, but yeah, it's um, ones that are already owned. They said you can keep them. So, but um, you got to register them with the state. If you don't register them by the first, like yeah, January first of next year, then um, basically you're a felon or something. Like that. <laughs> you got to register. Basically. Them. Yeah, like, yeah. Okay. So um, it did go through, and um, already it's getting pushed back from the Republicans. <laughs> like, like so, Darren Bailey, he was there because he's um a state senator or something. He was there. He's like um, see you in court or some shit. Like yeah, he said, something. <laughs> and like, we're not going to comply. It's like it's uh, it's already getting messy and shit. A lot of the um sheriffs around the state are like saying, yeah, we're not going to enforce that too. That are in the more Republican heavy, um, 
counties. Yeah, I was like, yeah, County, yeah. I'm looking for the Republican. So when you start driving down 57, go down state, it's red. <laughs> or go out towards the Rockford, like, which, as a matter of fact, some of the Rockford ones out in that area, I saw when I was looking through them, I was like, okay, Winnebago County, I know that, sure. <laughs> Ogle County, I know that. Well, I, was, I started looking through some of the counties. <laughs> so these are all like right by Rockford. So, yeah, like, Court yeah. County. <laughs> Yeah, Vermilion County, like those are like going south. Yeah, <laughs> as a um a Second Amendment, I'm a gun guy, so I was like, I was following this story pretty closely, yeah. But mm -hmm. he had passed um last Monday or Tuesday, right after we finished, pretty much, because okay. they went through the house already when we were like a week ago when we talked about this. Right, it went, it went through the Senate, and then like as soon as it went through the Senate, like JB, JB he said. Was sitting there with his pen, he was waiting. JB for did like this. He, like it passed like the Senate, and then probably like an hour later, he signed the shit. It was literally like that. Like, he wasn't bullshitting on that when he signed it immediately. Yeah, mostly because of the Highland Park shit. That's what it was. It yeah, was more of a um, yeah, political move. Because I don't think it's gonna stop gun violence, like especially in the hood, because the hood don't use AR-15s and shit. <laughs> so like, fix the hood. Just about that. <laughs> If we find out why cats are shooting, I like, guess yeah, like fix that shit. The I say the socio economic a whole like they don't mean well, don't, don't get me on my comes, soapbox about that. That's where the mayor comes in hand. So we have this mayoral thing. Like yeah. now we start to see mayoral. I'm starting to see the yard signs. Like I'm seeing. Like I don't know who some of these people are. I'm like, who is this? Who I know. Is uh, I don't know who some of these Lightfoot, people are. Willie Wilson, and Chewy Garcia. That's the only names I really. Oh, what's Paul? Paul Vallis is running now. Paul Vallis. I haven't seen Paul Vallis. I, yeah, yeah. I see him online a lot. Yeah, I see mm -hmm. him. He does. I don't know if he's done a lot of yard signs, but um, definitely his presence on like Facebook and Twitter. He's like all over that. I saw his commercials on TV, and I'm like, oh, I said Paul Vallis is running because I didn't even know. I just saw his commercial, and then I'm seeing like all these yard signs of people I've never even heard of. I'm like, who is that? Like, like, who um, is that? The last uh, mayor was that 2019? It's gonna be like that all over again. Yeah, like a, a, a 25 candidates is gonna be like that all over again. I'm seeing them Willie Wilson signs though. When I'm driving. I'm seeing I them his Willie last Wilson year. Here, you know, Willie Wilson started putting. <laughs> I'm seeing more of them. I just started starting to see like more. I only started like concentrating in one area. Now I'm starting to see them spread out now. <laughs> I, the ones I see the most are his and Chewy Garcia, pretty much everywhere. That's they um. They kind of flooding us the, the sign market is those. <laughs> like, I see Chewy there. Garcia where I'm at. I've been seeing. I, I see him all up and down Wilson. Lakeshore Drive. All this time you seeing Chewy. I at. see Willie Wilson. <laughs> I see Brandon Johnson. I want to say or Jack. What Brandon Johnson? I think is his name. Like I don't know who it is. <laughs> Brandon T. <laughs> Brandon T. Jackson. Johnson, I'd Wilson. vote for Brandon Not Jackson. Brandon Johnson. I want to say is his name. <laughs> and. That's all I really see. I, I see no Lori Lightfoot signs. The same. Yeah, the incumbent. So she doesn't have to do as signs as much. The incumbent typically has the advantage, except mm -hmm. for Lightfoot. I don't know if it's because like her record is kind of shaky. So I don't know if it's an Body. advantage. <laughs> so I don't know about her. That's body. where the uh, mayor comes in, like addressing what needs to be put into the city to help deter, like. Like one thing I always say about crime, especially in Chicago's the third largest city in the country. So in large cities like Chicago, it's never going to be zero percent crime. It's just not. It's just yeah. never going to be zero. But it's things that you can do to deter and reduce the crime rate. And you have to look at the crime rate per capita, like per is it one hundred thousand people? I think that's the that's what they do per capita. I think that's the crime rate per one hundred thousand. So if you're looking at that, seeing like, okay, how many homicides occur per 100,000? How many gun, you know, how many are related to gun violence? How many, you know, that type of stuff? How many armed robberies are there? You have to look at things you know, like that. Fix the hood and this crime problem will take care of itself. That's just my Right. Opinion. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you need to find. <laughs> my like, opinion. I, think, I may be wrong, but that's all. Fix the hood. I think resources need to go in to help deter it. Like I said, one big thing, like why all these why all these carjackings were happening at one point with these kids, these kids need to be in stuff. Too much idle time. These kids need to be in resources, need to be in activities, need to be in something to like busy them. So you're not thinking like, what could I do? Let me go rob this. And then you're going over here carjacking, but then somebody running somebody like you, like a second amendment person in. You know, like we said last week, fuck around, find out. You fucked around, you found out. Yeah. Like that, and it's more coming out about that Houston shoot story too. Like it's um 
more layers to that that have been coming out. But uh, yeah, I don't know if the guys even sorry that I didn't see that part, but um, it's like they, I watched the video fine because at first I didn't watch it, I watched the video, and it was like one shot that um people like is the questionable one, yeah, but. Other than that, it's like, yeah, I still say it's self defense. It's <laughs> not self defense. It was like, yeah, well, it was. Yeah, you, you, somebody robbing you, you got, you brought that on yourself. If you rob somebody and you get shot, like, that's on you. I don't feel bad for you. <laughs> Play stupid games and get stupid prizes. Play stupid prizes. <laughs> that's the phrase. Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> but, um, the gama. Assault weapons and magazine thing is um the Illinois Rifle Association, which is the state version of the NRA. Basically, they think they file in their suit against the state and all of that. So it's going to um get messy. It's going to be a mess. <laughs> it's going to be a goddamn um political mess and shit right now. But <laughs> I'll be following. Like when I saw the fifteen rounds, okay, yeah, that's um it's a pretty good compromise to me. Yeah. Yeah, I say all um gun control is racist just because we know the history of gun control was to keep people's <laughs> hands. But yeah, that's just my opinion. It's like, <laughs> it's like, but um, if you, gotta, if you got if you got a compromise, I say um the fifteen I'm comfortable with. Yeah, that's my thing is no side is going to be a hundred. Nobody's going to be a hundred percent pleased. Mm-hmm. If you're on opposite ends of the spectrum, you guys got to come in the middle. You have to come in the middle. Ten rounds, and I was like, you have to come in the middle. I said not telling my business, but um, I'd I'd be a felon right now if it went that ten round one. Because <laughs> I'm not complying, I'm not giving my shit up. Just like he said, turn him in or yeah, become a criminal. I guess the latter and shit is what I, they said. <laughs> I ain't turning shit. Yeah, they they, they ain't gonna give you no money for your shit. So why would I turn it into them? Fuck them. What are they gonna I give you? You gotta, you gotta meet. You yeah. gotta meet like. You got to come up some, you got to go down, and then you got to meet right there in the middle if you're on opposite ends of the spectrum. Nobody's going to get 100% of everything that they want. That's just not reality. So you got to compromise it. Yeah, that was my concern when I saw this you going to. Like 10 rounds. I'm like, yee, like, y'all, um. <laughs> that's really <laughs> short. Yeah, <laughs> that's really like. That one is like, Especially like you said, like, yeah, well, we need people to protect us, but yeah, we like said, it, said, it, said it doesn't apply <laughs> to law enforcement or or it's private security. So it's like, uh, if the 10 rounds was really enough, like you would be for across the board, the cops would have 10 rounds, your security would have 10 rounds. So you know, it's bullshit. It's your actions. I don't listen to your words, I follow your actions. Your actions say that 10 rounds is not enough. Your security can have as well, many. What's the old phrase that they always say? Do as I say. <laughs> That's what I do. Do what I say. That's what I. That's what I looked at. I was like, if ten, if you, because they say, well, you don't need more than ten rounds. And why did these fucking assholes protect you? Have more than ten rounds? Then (laughs) if you don't need more than ten, and then (laughs) subject can be changed. Or like, if it was one of them, I'd be uh, arrest that man. They'd have me put out. (laughs) You know, people flex like that when you challenge them. It's like, yeah. They say I was disrupting the fucking process. Yeah, I'd be arrested and kicked the fuck out of there. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they would have done with me. Because <laughs> if I was the press covering it, I would have said it. Like, hey, it's Oz, man. I would have represented uh, it's Oz, man, from Not Another Damn Podcast. I would uh, rep us with this shit. <laughs> anyway, if uh, 10 rounds is enough, why does your security have more than 10? <laughs> Get that man the fuck out of here. <laughs> Yeah, they wouldn't even answer that shit. They just got me the fuck out of there. But well, um, they wouldn't give the political answer where like you do this, you talk around the question, and then you don't answer. If they it. gave an answer, it'll be some bullshit. <laughs> well, and da 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 da, because politicians are good. like you didn't answer the question at all. <laughs> like, you just you just talked around. You didn't answer it at all, but except for Donald Trump and shit. Because my life is important, yours isn't. He would have just told you straight up his ass. <laughs> he would have said some bullshit like that. Because like, I'm because I because I'm rich and famous, so I I'm, a, I'm a billionaire <laughs> and I need protection at all times. He just told you that fucker. He's the only one that would have just told you straight up. Because <laughs> I'm a billionaire and I'm famous, the who said, I need protection. You don't. <laughs> now, now Trump says the quiet parts loud. <laughs> he says the quiet parts very loud. He's the only one that would have told you. <laughs> straight up, yeah, because I'm Donald Trump and I need protection, motherfucker. He would have said that shit. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> What's your net worth? <laughs> exactly. Why, why do you need more than ten? Yeah, no one knows who you are. <laughs> I'm Donald. My, my my name is on all the buildings in New York. <laughs> 
who the hell is this guy? <laughs> I was on The Apprentice. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? And you mad, bro? You're mad. I'm not <laughs> mad. <laughs> you mad, bro? Who is this? <laughs> he that though. Yeah, that fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I just wanted to kick it off with that and update on that. Yeah, it's officially passed, but um, the lawsuits are hitting, so I don't know if it's gonna be delayed until that's yeah. But as of right now, if you have an AR-15, yeah. Well, if you if it has to be registered by the end of the year, but other than yeah. that, yeah. <laughs> other than that, you' about to be screwed if you don't yeah. register your shit. And ten rounds for rifles, fifteen rounds. I Man, I get it. Like in rural areas, they do need it. I get that, you know. Yeah. Because me, I'm a concealed carrier, and it's pretty hard to conceal a fucking rifle. Unless you're gonna walk walk around with a trench coat and it up under the motherfucker. <laughs> so yeah. And that's where we this where we that's how the whole thing started. Like when I was in high school in the nineties, that's when all that's that's because of Columbine. That's all that was. when that started happening, because they started tripping. Like after Columbine, like the guys, because we had a lot of emo, gothy kids at my school and they couldn't wear their trench coats anymore. They was like, You can't wear your trench coats to suit no more. They stopped them from wearing their trench Remember your guy Sting, the wrestler, he was um he had switched to like a, a goth like crow type character during that time. It was like when okay, you, okay. it started getting them more edgy and shit. So yeah. his character was made based more like Brandon Lee from the Crow. From the crow, yeah. Line, they made, he, he couldn't wear his coat to the ring anymore because <laughs> he had the long black coat. <laughs> he said, mm -hmm. That's too many memories of Colin by made Sting stop wearing his coat. I was like, oh. stupid man. <laughs> it's a fucking wrestling character. I remember that. Yeah. I remember when they put the male detectors in the school and then the guys who had the trench coats, they was like, nope. I remember, <laughs> like nope. Remember Sting's coat getting banned. That's what I remember. I remember that in the nineties. Couldn't wear his coat to the ring anymore. <laughs> I remember. See, that. Like we all said, we're that old, and we remember when that actually happened in the nineties. We remember that. <laughs> but you got kids. I got some more. Yeah. Um, if we want to stay kind of Chicago themed or whatnot, um, kind of in Chicago, but then going adjacent, uh. I saw this and I was like, I hope that it's not true. I saw it posted. It looks like it may be in the works encore. Why? The documentary for Michael Jordan. Well, I did see that. Yeah. It's like um it's gonna be the opposite of the last dance. It's gonna be so I was like, I hope that this is not serious because when I saw Encore, Michael Jordan's Wizards Days. It got to be a joke because, like, who gives a shit about Jordan's Wizards days? It's like People, the comment section was off the chain while they say, Yeah, we get to see him yell at 18 year old Kwame Brown. <laughs> oh, I would love that. <laughs> Kwame <laughs> Stephen A. Smith <laughs> that documentary and shit. <laughs> Stephen A would be all over that shit. <laughs> and then, my thing that I say about like true to form, if, if this is a real thing with Michael Jordan, true to form, you had the perfect out. Last dance was perfect. And then you had to fuck it up and come back and do the withers. You had to all you these had the perfect that, ending. Um, that's what it is. Like they can't accept that. Um, you had the perfect ending. Perfect. Here's the thing: Michael never wanted to retire after that. Like he, um, he was caught. He was bluffing. Like because Jordan is a card player, so I get he was bluffing. He said because uh, um Phil Jackson was out of there regardless. Yeah, like, out of there because like the relationship was so strained. It's like he said, even if you go eighty two and zero and win the title, we're not we're down bringing here. you back and shit. Yeah, right. So yeah. Phil knew, the office knew, like, everybody, the fans, everybody knew that Phil wouldn't be back. So Michael going out on a limb saying, well, if Phil's not back, then I'm retiring. Not thinking that, he's thinking that um, they 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 are bringing back before that. So then right. when they didn't, when they brought in Tim Floyd, he had no choice but to retire. He said, okay, I'm not playing for that guy, so I'm retiring. Right. But he couldn't. But Michael just... never wanted to retire after 98. He still was in his prime. It's like he still had some good years. Like, yeah, like Michael, he, he just hit the winning shot in the NBA finals. Like he he still was the best player in the league at that time. Why would he want to retire? He still was the best. It was, he wasn't declining. He was the best player in the NBA when yeah. he hit that shot. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, who was better than him in 98? Shaq yeah. Malone, who was like, nah, he was the best player in the league. <laughs> Not Grant Hill. Grant no. Hill, hell no. Yeah, like, come think about like, who was like relevant during that Iverson, time. Iverson, like who was like none of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <so> yeah. <laughs> um, not Penny Hardaway, no. Like I'm thinking like all, I think a lot of people that were like relevant during like the late nineties, like relevant players. No, like nobody. Garnett, it was like none of those. Yeah, like yeah, Mike, nobody Mike, was the best player. He was better than all of them. 
So like mm-hmm. he wasn't ready to retire. So um, but when um they called his bluff and they fired Phil anyway, it's like so he had no choice to save face. He couldn't come back and play under Tim Floyd, and then he had to, he had to retire. So, but um he wasn't ready. So then um after sitting out a couple years and then he was with the Wizards, he said, "Fuck it, I'm coming back." Yeah, because he was calling the shots then. He was the GM, so he was put yourself on the team. It's like, hey, fuck it, I'm coming back. It's like. <laughs> Put my warm ups on. I'm coming, coming in, <laughs> coming in, coach. <laughs> they show on that shit. I want to see uh, Kwame Brown get cursed out. That way. I don't. I don't want to see it. All right, no. One, <laughs> my thing, I wrote. I said no one asked for this documentary. No one asked for this. No one wants this. Mm-hmm. If this is really in the work, I hope that they they exit out immediately because like, you know a lot of things do be like okay, and then it just dies in uh, pre production. Basically, a lot of stuff dies. Because sometimes some it sounds like a good idea. Like let's say they have all this footage and then they start watching it. It's like this shit is unwatchable. Like nobody's going like, nobody right. like once they put all start putting the footage and like editing it, it's like mm, and then together to make it make sense. It's not good. It's like so then they just cancel it. <laughs> that happens a lot. <laughs> Where they just once you start looking at it, it's like it sounded like a good idea, but no, nah, in this theory, is not it was a good not idea in theory. Idea. But no one asked for this documentary and yeah. It would not be as successful as The Last Dance, obviously. Nowhere close. And like, not of, even close. Speaking of that, also on Apple TV, I watched as well. I forgot. Um, it's uh, the, the magic document. The, it's like the magic version of um of The, the Last Dance. Yeah, I watched that one. The magic, the magic one. I watched yeah, it. I just watched that, yeah. Yeah, I watched it. The magic one. Really good, yeah. I didn't know magic was as hectic as he was. Like, with all the stuff with Cookie. I was like, wait, what? Oh, yeah, that, uh, that stuff. I mean, yeah, that stuff I had heard. No. No, but like, like they wrote a the book after they were. Like, so like, he wrote a book back in the night. I remember he, his book he wrote. Yeah, so I knew a lot of this stuff. When yeah. he kept on calling, like, okay, like he just like, is he going to get down the aisle? <laughs> like, they was like, is he going to be going to be here? Yeah, because they got married me? right like, before they got married right before his retirement. So yeah, right. they've been dating since college. So obviously, he called off an engagement more than once during that time. <laughs> right, it was like four times that they they called it off like four times. They finally it went through. She was like, "Is he gonna be here?" Like I was like, "Whoa!" Like, yikes! Like I didn't know about all that. I didn't know, <laughs> but it was a good documentary. It was the magic. Yeah, was really mom, good. my lady learned a lot about magic. She didn't know that magic. What? Yeah, she didn't know a lot of because she's not a big basketball fan. Like yeah, she doesn't follow so that. So I, I really like this dude because magic. Mm-hmm. He got just like that infectious personality. Like, yeah. infectious and what I liked about really magic like is that. that Magic did set the blueprint for like the Jordans, for the Shacks, like to become oh, business. Jordan, talk about that. Yeah, to become entrepreneurs and businessmen. Because he because did it. Well, LeBron his basketball career ended prematurely because of the HIV. The HIV. And so he said, "What am I going to do with my time?" So he started businesses. That's what he he started. If we started the Magic Johnson theaters and um his Starbucks and like all of that. Um, fitness centers. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. Marcus said when he was out in L.A. like years ago, he said that Magic, like he was somewhere and he was like, Magic owned like the whole, like that whole area. He was like Magic Johnson, everything. Like in that one area he was in, he was like, this is all Magic's business. And I still like, say, I know a lot of people <laughs> like the, the late, great Kobe Bryant, but to me, Magic's still the greatest Laker of all time. That's just my opinion. Like, I, grew up, I grew up on Showtime, so I'm biased. Yeah, greatest Laker of all time, Magic Johnson. To me. Kobe's a close two. Kobe's very Probably close, close to yeah. They both very close to played their whole careers with the Lakers. Both won five championships. It's pretty close, like their resumes. Yeah, I say that Kobe is a. If you say, I, I, if you do like this, one A and one B, I say you could say it like that for the one A, one B. Like it's not a wrong answer if you say Magic, if you say Kobe, it's not a wrong answer. Magic you know? one led the Lakers to the championship his rookie year. Come on, like, yeah, yeah. that motherfucker was cold. <laughs> and Kareem got hurt in that year. Like, yes, yeah, so Magic mm-hmm. was leading the team because Kareem, he got injured <laughs> during the finals. So Magic had to lead the team like during that the rookie. Yeah. Yeah. So greatest Laker of all time. And that's the era. <laughs> and when he started going through all of that, then I started explaining to Babe. I was like, yeah, this is uh, this is what got me into basketball this right here. <laughs> time with the passes. And then they showed um uh, Ma- Magic and Larry the Lakers Celtics. Yeah, right. when they showed that, yeah. This when uh, this was it. <laughs> the thing I like about that I like about streaming, but I don't like about streaming is <laughs> the way that like the one episode is, and then it automatically starts the next Those, episode. Yeah, like next episode starts in five, four, four. three, two. Wait, like, like yeah. 
Cause man, I thought I need so and so so. I need another like like let's say with the last dance, man. Cause we need more rebounding. And you be like, oh shit, it's yeah, Robin. Yeah, left the, left the Horace left and went to the we Magic. We need more yeah. rebounding, well, and that's how the episode yeah, we need, ends. We need help and power forward, so that you know, okay, this and is. You the already Robin. know Robin. Yeah. And then they shot the little trailer at the end, like next on, you know, and then they show Robin and then they start counting down the corner. And then the bad thing about streaming is that, you know, you'll be there like 10 hours watching, like, yeah. <laughs> the whole day is just gone. You're like, I was supposed well, to I go did. New, we watched all of this you know? Magic Johnson thing in one day. We did. <laughs> and I think like I was supposed to go the same night. I think later that night we watched, yeah, all of that. Yeah, we're just chilling here. Yeah. I, mean, I was supposed to work out. I was supposed to go grocery shopping. I was supposed to run all these errands, and then I just didn't do anything. I watched Netflix or I watched Apple TV or who, whatever. I watched TV all day. I did nothing. But that's the good and bad thing about streaming is that you can get all your stuff in or you can like not do stuff and not be productive for like the whole day. But it's good if you don't have anything to do this. If you have like a holiday or like you have like some extra time. So it's good for that. Yeah. So I will say that. But yeah, no one asked for that documentary. <laughs> so I hope that it, I hope it just doesn't go past pre because no one wants to see him yelling at 18 year old Kwame Brown and cussing him out. Neighbor. And Jerry Stackhouse or whoever else, Larry, <laughs> whoever was on that team. <laughs> I remember <this> team. <laughs> who else was on that fucking team? I think Steve Blake was on that team. I'm trying to remember oh, who was on gosh. that team during that time. Like who Yikes. I think was the point guard on that team. I want to say. Yikes. I'm, I'm old. I remember that team. I'm with it, man. That was, oh my God. It was hard to watch that. It was. It was like, especially as Bulls fans, like seeing Michael in that jersey. Just, washed up. Always seeing a washed up Michael. Yeah, I washed up Jordan and just him in that jersey, period, offended me. Right. It's like, that's not. Like, he don't even look right in blue. We're red and black. Like, you know, we wear the red and black. You know, like, the Bulls. Right. Only, right. only blue he looked right in was the Carolina blue. <laughs> Any other blue he didn't look right wearing. It's like, At all. At all, right in that jersey, like knock it off. <laughs> yeah, this is this is. I get terrible. mad to this day when I see people throw back with the Wizards jersey. I'm like, burn that shit. Like we don't do, <laughs> we don't do that. Shit. It should be banned in Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> other cities like the Wizards Jordan jersey should be banned in Chicago. I get mad whenever I see somebody in the street with what a throwback. Like take that shit off. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> Start being disrespect. like the fucking um the PETA folks the first are throwing bleach on the shit like that. Take like, that shit out of here, man. We don't wear that in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> you don't wear Jordan Wizards jerseys in the nah. and I'm the wizard and I'm not banning shit. The wizard bans that shit. It's like <laughs> nah. That's a negative. <laughs> well, you'll see an occasional person with that Jordan Wizards like take that shit off. <laughs> Put the um Chicago 23 on. With the script, Chicago, I got that script, one. Yeah, I want one of those. I gotta get one. I got it. I found that too when I was moving. Yeah, because you find oh. it, it, it had disappeared, then it turned back up. I was like, oh, I got, it. I still have it. I should have wore it on the podcast. <laughs> I, <was> like, <laughs> I knew we were gonna talk about this other word. I said this is the throwback you wear, not that it's throwback. Yeah, I got him one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's stay in Chicago. Talk about yay, Mr. Kanye. Apparently married. <laughs> He, he not only he was missing lost, to, but now he's marry. found. Missing to married, yeah. Yeah, he was found, and now he's married, allegedly. To um, <laughs> Bianca Sensori, is that how we pronounce her name? Sensori. Sensori, thank you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Sensori, yeah. Mm. Who looks a lot like Kim. Kanye got a type. <laughs> like, mm. like, a lot like him, like. Looks like a younger Kim. Like she looks a lot like Kim. I'm like, mm. every woman that you date looks like that. That's okay. Like we say, everybody got a type. Everybody does. So you definitely got a type. Yeah. But from what we know about side her, by side, that's funny. Let's <laughs> side by side because like she looks the way I saw. I was, I was like, okay, I was like, let me see what his new wife looks like. Let me I see. Got the and side by like, side, look, look, yeah. I can't like him. <laughs> compare the two. Well, Amber Rose and Kim had the same birthday, so I was about to say, yeah, like, they had yeah. the same birthday. <laughs> yeah, so I'm like, wait, what? Okay, Bianca, Kim, they do yeah. all have similarities. You look at them. Yeah. She looks like a younger Kim. She mm -hmm. does. Because uh, Bianca is 27, I want to say. So Kanye is a little bit older than her. So because mm -hmm. Kanye is 45, she's 27. So yeah. 
Yeah, but she's an architect from what we know, and she did work with him. Yeezy, yeah. So I, they was like, we're not sure why Yeezy needed an architect on payroll. Well, <laughs> she was well, like, we're not sure. It, it. She looked like Kim. That's why she was on the payroll. <laughs> like, why was she? Because he was like, we like, we were like, he's never worked in like he did fashion, not art. Like we don't understand why he, he needs did want to open his in, in his defense. Let's say, well, would this be? Yeah, it would be architects. Yeah, he did want to open um standalone Yeezy stores. So maybe, okay, so uh, maybe for, like the concept. Yeah, maybe that was one of the things he had. One of the things he beefed at with Adidas is like um. Instead of just, I don't just want my product in like, um, in a regular store. Oh, yeah, like Foot Locker. Oh, yeah, Foot Locker, or Snipes, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He's like, I want to have my own standalone Yeezy stores. That's one of the things that they beefed okay. over here, like before they way before they dropped him. Like he, um, he had problems with Adidas for years because of that. He wanted standalone mm -hmm. stores, so maybe that's why she was around. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt on that one. <laughs> he had her around to like design his um uh, his standalone Yeezy stores. <laughs> she's apparently uh she's falling off the grid because she doesn't want the attention because they said she deactivated all her social media. Smart woman <laughs> now, so, like <laughs> smart lady. <laughs> she, she, she deactivated her social media, so if you do try to go and find her. Is deactivated. So that reminds me of um one of my old <laughs> classmates from school. The one, yeah, you, the one, uh, the when surviving R. Kelly came out. The one. That, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I she won't say yeah. her name because out of respect for her privacy now, but her name is very much out there. But yeah, is um after that documentary dropped, she pretty much deactivated everything. You can't you find her. Everything. Like you can't find her. Of course, everybody went to like look because like a lot of people that probably didn't know that like that like went looking <laughs> around. Like we all knew because we knew back then and how she was talking. Yeah. About him, so, and um, and she would post pics like kind of alluding to like not pics of him, but like stuff from that era she posted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, all that shit is gone. Like she deactivated everything after that. So, because mm -hmm. you no know, folks are probably her inbox probably exploded after that. Document. Yeah. yeah I, I can't do this shit. Yeah. Be high, as he, as he... <laughs> Beehive, yeah. <laughs> Like, how are you gonna attack her? Like she lived through this. Like how are you gonna, like she's the victim. Like yeah, how are you gonna attack her? Yeah, like so she knows more about this situation than you. Yeah, than you. Like you speaking as something you're some super fan and shit. <laughs> like you're speaking as a fan. She's speaking as a victim. So yeah. that's all. Might want to sit this one out there. Might want to sit that out. <laughs> Facts. But we'll see what Mister Yay West, whatever, when he. <laughs> Want to send some congratulations all out? Congratulations yeah. out to Naomi Osaka and Corday. Yes. First baby. Yes, they're, they're, she's pregnant with their child now. And she announced it so cute. I saw how she announced it because she posted her sonogram. And I was like, uh, I'm taking this year off from tennis, basically. Yeah. Because yeah. she had all, remember, she had missed the Olympics and all of that. So she already had some stuff as far as like taking a break from tennis. Mm -hmm. So now. I guess during her time down, she said, fuck it, let's have a baby. So yeah, while she said during her downtime, she said, let's do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They've been together since I think 2019. First date, I think they said it was to a Clippers game. So that's cute. Oh, nice. <laughs> Congratulations. Like I saw that when I saw that, I was like, really nice. So you know, the little sonogram and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I said, she didn't follow suit like uh, her predecessor like with Serena Williams. Serena Williams accidentally tweeted out a picture because she wasn't mean to like how her pregnancy came out, remember? Yeah. Because she was trying to send a private message to somebody and then it went out public with her baby but People was like, oh, you're pregnant. She was like, oh shit. It's like was she, wasn't trying to, she wasn't trying to announce that she was pregnant at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Shout out Naomi and Corday having a yes. bundle of joy. I like them as a couple. They pretty, yeah, I like them. Yeah. Pretty, pretty cool little couple. <laughs> yeah, they balance one another. Rooting for them, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, What did I have next? Um, Ah, uh, Golden Globes. Let's talk about it. <laughs> oh, another congratulations for expecting. Jamar Moore is expecting his first child. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. I, I forgot about that. Thank you, kid. 52. Yeah, he's 52, and he's about to have a baby. Yeah. He and his um lady, I saw that. Yeah. And uh, collectively, so many ladies' hearts broke. They're like, they said she stole because you know, a lot of women have loved Shabar Moore since the Young and the Restless day when he first, like, I mean, like way back in the day when he first was on there. 
I was gonna say um, soul train, but um, I go with young and restless. <laughs> a lot of ladies were like in their feelings about oh, now he's like you know she stole my man. <laughs> like a lot of ladies, I saw that in the comment section, but they wished him congratulations, and it looks like the baby is due. I think when either I think when his mom passed away, I think her, the baby is due on that day. I want to say, or something like that. It's something connected with his mom. I know it's something connected with his mom. So that would be like mm. you know. A, Maybe bringing a joy into you know now that his mom isn't here. So yeah. congratulations to him and his partner with uh, their new bundle of joy. Babies are great. And, uh, I ain't gonna say nothing. <laughs> what? One of my um former coworkers like now it makes sense why he didn't want that video of them making. <laughs> I'm to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I remember. <laughs> and that, and, um, yeah, because like her a co-worker outed her while they were kissing in the background and he ran the fuck out of there. So yeah. I, I said it at the time. I was like, he might have a situation and clearly he does. <laughs> That's why he like, so as he realized he was being recorded, he got the fuck out of there. <laughs> he bolted. <laughs> he was like, um, remember grit locked when um they showed Tupac and um and Oh and uh time. <laughs> Tim Robin, yeah. So there's bug shots and then the dude turns around and they just gone. And smoke. That was Samar. <laughs> when he realized he was being recorded, he was just gone. You didn't even see him leave the room. He was just gone. And <laughs> yeah, the stage left. <laughs> yeah, he got the fuck out of there, but you know what I'm talking about. I won't say that. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Very famous radio jock who has a fucking um uh, a street. No, okay, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> stop. Now you getting too specific. Stop, stop. That could be anybody, but we stop. know. Stop, <laughs> stop. Only one from Chicago. I can say that. That's enough. I said enough now. But golden glows. Congrats going out to Samara. We'll to... <laughs> talk about the Golden Globes. Shift gears to the Golden Globes. We'll say some more dumb shit. <laughs> Wish anybody watch it. <laughs> I mean, I guess people watch. I, I didn't watch it, but I definitely didn't watch it. Yeah, and I'm a, um, and I like watching the award shows typically, and that's usually one that kicks off award season. They um, this their first year back for a couple of reasons. <laughs> um, the first um, you know, obviously the um. 2021 show was canceled for mm -hmm. obvious reasons because okay. of COVID. But then um last year's show, because you know, remember the um the Hollywood foreign press, that whole scandal is saying it's like it's there's no black, not one black. Oh, yeah, black. yeah. <laughs> so a lot of black people say, Oh, we ain't going to that shit. It's like so they ended up canceling the 22 show because of that. Because a lot of people say, uh, oh, fuck them, we're not going to that shit. <laughs> How you have like all not not one black, not one black person on the Hollywood foreign press, you know? <laughs> but um, let then me... they brought a black host this year, Gerard yeah, Carmichael. Michael hosted. I'm trying to pull up. Um, he Who was. was... Uh... Go ahead. <laughs> As people, the reviews I saw him were kind of. <laughs> yeah, Gerard Carmichael. Um, they said he was. First of all, a lot of people um uh, yeah. never even they said who is this first yeah because like we I know we just, I, remember, I like I, remember, I used to watch the Carmichael the Carmichael show, show yeah like, my I guy Real was on there that's we I watched Kimmy yeah. Hatch was on there yeah. and Amber Stevens West yeah she was on right there. Yeah. yeah Loretta Devine and Dave Allen Greer right Greer played the there father I named the whole cast there we go there you go. I remember my guy Rel is on there. That's so why mm -hmm. I checked it out. But a lot of people never even heard of Gerard Carmichael. I was like, who is he? Right? Like, and why is he hosting? And he said it on stage. He's like, yeah, the reason why I'm up here is because I'm black. I'm black. He said that. He said, I know a lot of you probably don't know who the fuck I am. So he admitted yeah, I'm black. That, admitted he, he wasn't qualified to host shit. Basically, he said, the reason why they got me up here is because I'm black. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But um, who stole the show? Which I did see the um that went viral. Did you see Eddie Murphy's speech? Yeah, keeping <laughs> he, it. He got the um, yeah, Cecil be the male um lifetime achievement award is what he got. Yeah. So shout out to Eddie, who been acting for over forty years. He said I've been doing this forty one years, which yeah, yeah. like yeah, forty eight yeah. hours was his um. Beverly Hills Cop was a long time ago. Beverly Hills Cop was eighty four. Yeah. Trading Places was a long time ago. It was eighty three, and um, what's the name? Forty eight hours, eighty two. So like, yeah, these, these are all were, early eighties. These movies, it's like, yeah. like so, I was a baby when this was going on. So yeah, Forty eight hours baby. came out eighty two. So they said, yeah, I've been acting for forty one years. I'm like, yeah, like she has. Yeah, been. I was a baby when he started acting. So. 
And he said um, he <laughs> gave the blueprint for success in the industry. Would you like to hear it? <laughs> yeah. And, I, and I'm going to hop in when you say the first one. He said, pay your taxes. Pay your taxes. Mind your business. Pay your taxes. And keep Mind Will's your wife's name out your fucking mouth. mouth. <laughs> Just when you thought that the everybody was over the Will Smith slap, but he did it appropriately. It was funny. Eddie, Eddie's Eddie. Eddie's, Eddie's the Eddie. So, yeah. He knows how to make it because we feel like that joke has been like it's a dead horse at this point. But somehow Eddie, Eddie Murphy, Murphy still made it funny though, even though like the joke is like a year old almost at this point. But somehow Eddie Murphy made it funny again because <laughs> that's really like said, the first big award show since the, the first one that you know the on that big yeah. that, that top level. Yeah, and so he mm -hmm. said, "Fuck it, let's go back in there." So, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, there it is. <laughs> And Angela got her second Golden Globe. Okay, I yeah. Saw that. Eddie, I didn't see the results. I just saw Eddie Murphy's clip. I mean, I saw it, uh, I saw it clip, so like it, it let me pull up the pull up the results. <laughs> that's the thing that I saw that uh that I watched a video of because Jennifer Hudson presented her her award. And like okay. I think that Jennifer requested that because she wants to be able to give, you know, black women we stick together, we want to give another black woman. Her award like because Sam, of the Jennifer Sam, it's like Sam Jackson presenting. I have Spike Lee his Oscar. Spike Lee, yeah. Out there when Spike won the Oscar, and Sam happened to be presenting. Or another one when um <laughs> when Common and John Legend got their Oscar for Glory, like Prince presented him. Prince presented, yeah. Common said that. So if you would have told me when I was a kid that Prince presented me an Oscar, I would have thought <laughs> you were making a joke. <laughs> <laughs> you say like, you can't make that up. It's like that's like <laughs> shit that dreams are made of. That Prince will be presenting me an Oscar. It's like he's like shit. You can't. <laughs> Jennifer she, Hudson, she's she still show. She's still so Chicago. She Angela Bassett. He doesn't Jennifer Hudson. She was so apt to like say Angela Bassett. She was too apt to say that. That's and right. I want to say um. Tyler Williams, uh, aka Chris, oh, yeah, he got his first gold. He got his uh, golden glow for Abbey Elementary. He should have so, won. I mean, should have won for, for everybody. It's Chris back in the day. Yeah, so it was good to see um, <laughs> the growth of him from <laughs> child actor into adult actor. Like he's made a great transition. Like he transitioned well. I thought he was hilarious as Chris. He should have won one. Day. His faces, <laughs> like I love his faces. I gotta out. check out Abbey Lane Mitch. Mrs. Morello will say some dumb shit. He just make a face. He was so racist. <laughs> <laughs> he just make a face at her ass and shit. Yes, but Chris, everybody doesn't have 16 half siblings like you. What? <laughs> what? I went through a shit with her for saying something like that to me. <laughs> wait, oh. wait, what? I know you don't have, I know you don't know who your father is. <laughs> Bitch, what? <laughs> Yeah, she would have got cussed out by me if a teacher said that to me. Yeah, I couldn't have went to um, was it Tatalia Elementary? Is that what? Yeah, it? Let, a let a teacher say it to my kids. Like, let a teacher say it to one of my kids. <laughs> but yeah, though the uh, like I said, I missed the awards. But uh, oh, Gerard Carmichael got into some hot water because he made a joke about Whitney Houston. Joke, uh, yeah, yeah, he made it. And weird. people are calling for his head and. Mm. It's like, I mean, is he really, I mean, like, people really don't know him like that. <laughs> so, I mean, is he really, you know, really like, him. like I said, a lot of people didn't like, even know who he was. Like, like we don't know, really know who he is. What is this? Why is he hosted? Because <laughs> he made a tasteless joke, basically. You know, they could have let, if they were going to go, they could have let the homie Rail host it. That would have been awesome. <laughs> yeah. At least Rail was in an Oscar winning film. Yeah. Get out. Yeah, he was like, yeah, he was in that Oscar winning film. It's like people would know him from that at least. Yeah. yeah he so, got a memorable quote. <laughs> yeah. Yes, motherfucking hey. It's looking back like everybody from the Carmichael show is probably more famous than Gerard Carmichael. We just thought of because Tiffany had his little rail, the Red Divine. Pretty much all of them are more famous than him. We look back at that. It was his show, but all of them are like more famous than him. <laughs> Dave Allen Greer, legendary. It's like pretty much yeah. all of them. Yeah, I mean, even Wesley Miller, you know, she did her thing. Because, like I said, she's on the show I Run the World. She's on that. Yeah, you know, I mean, she did her thing. She's done since the Carmichael show, but I guess she's, she's going to run the world. Yeah. I hope they come back for a second season. I hope they're second. I hope they do come back for a second season. I hope they do. Okay. Mm. But yeah, he got in hot water about that with you. Because, like, I heard the joke and I was like, it was like, it was tasteless. It wasn't funny. And yeah. Like, my thing is, my tip I'm giving, like, I don't know who wrote the joke or who these writers, because obviously 
award shows have writers for these jokes. Like a lot of times, it's not the host making Bill, the jokes. Um, produced the show. Like he's um he's like worked at BET. He's like um so they had a black producer too. Like for the okay, movie. like Stephen Hill. But I don't know if he wrote the show. I know he produced the show. Okay. Like, He's, so he's thing, one that's dating Shante Moore, basically. Shante Moore, yeah. I saw the picture of them together, and I was like, oh. Did yeah. they get married? Are they married? I know he's with I her. I think yeah. they got married, I want to say. Well, yeah, Shante's got a man, and that's Stephen Hill. Now, basically, yeah, he's him now. That show, yeah, he's the one that produced it. Yeah. But my advice I give to, like, these writers is, is that Everything doesn't have to be for shock. You know, like some people try to like, I want to shock them. I'm going to jolt them. And it's like, and you fall flat. Like there's nothing worse than that. You think that this is going to kill them. And then your joke goes like this. <laughs> and I just. Why does everything got to be so goddamn edgy now? That's it completely the- falls flat. And then the audience is like this. I hate why everything got to <laughs> be so like that. edgy now. What happened, like, what happened to like, like. You could have some lighthearted comedy and shit. Like, like which one call it? Like, I mean, I know he's probably like a thousand years old now, but like Billy Crystal never did no shit like that. Like, can we get Billy Crystal? Yeah, back when like, he still. never did no shit like that. Well, like, like he when, was always funny. And he, like when Lionel Richie used to host like the AMA, yeah. it's like like lighthearted shit. It's like, why does shit have to be so fucking um, edgy now and shit? <laughs> like, which one call it was good, but like I said, given her history now, given her... Like skeletons now. Like Ellen was good when she hosted the Oscar. Like her, her, her but now, now she got stained because well, nobody likes Ellen anymore now. Because she, she's Cause they're like that was a front. <laughs> they're like that was fake. That wasn't her for real. That was fake. Notice her show went off right after that scandal. It's like what well, it smoked this fire. She ended her show right after that came up. She's like, you know, I'm ending the Ellen show. So like, it's probably something to it. It's like because it's too coincidental. The show went off the air right after that story leaked. Yeah, <laughs> it's definitely something to that. Yeah, but I mean, we need like some light. Like, I mean, wh- where's Billy Crystal and people like that? We need someone like that to host again. Why does everything got to be so edgy <laughs> now? Like, uh, is society just so whack now that everything it's dark? Be- everything has to be dark humor. They said Winter Carl was freaking hilarious. Uh, I gotta watch her speech. They said Jennifer Coolidge was hilarious on her speech. <laughs> She's Ooh. always gonna be Stifler's mom. She will always be stiff with mom for me. I got the modern. I got the modern version of um. Like, why not let like Fallon host? He's pretty light, lighthearted. Yeah. yeah. Fallon, like he really does. He doesn't like out of all the late night hosts. He's the one that's like the safe guy. Mm-hmm. Like Colbert and Kimball, they kind of like edgy as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, like of course, like Trevor Noah, he was like yeah with his like, but um, yeah, the safe one. Why not let yeah Jimmy Fallon host? Yeah, he's like he's Trevor a- Noah is good though. I think he's pretty good. I think that he would be a good one to do. Trevor, he was on um, the does Kyle um, was it um Daily Show? He would um he'd drop some political shit in his like that. yeah he'll sprinkle in a little, but he won't go too far left with it. He'll sprinkle a little bit over it, but then he'll pull back. Like he'll sprinkle, pull back, sprinkle, pull back. Because he did, what, was it the Grammys? One of those shows. I forget which one he did. He yeah. did one and recently. Because I know, like, he was messing with uh with um, Silk Sonic. Yeah. He was messing with Silk Sonic. I didn't remember. Let Fallon, <laughs> let Fallon host and him and Justin Timberlake can sing a song. Because they always make these little comedy songs together. To do that, shit, that'd be funny and lighthearted. Yeah. <laughs> so, so instead of unfunny and edgy, yeah, like Jack Bride, Carmichael, and shit. <laughs> <laughs> but the world is just so dark now. Everybody just wants to be just a dark cloud. It's like let's put some, put some uh sunshine out, put some rainbows out, put some shooting stars out. Like let's put some happiness out. Like we have to be so. We were in a freaking pandemic for two and a half years. Like, let's, you know, like, let's. I blame it all on um, Howard Stern and I miss they started this shit. And now, we, now it's out of control because <laughs> they were the shock jocks of their era. <laughs> let's be real. No, like, everybody, you're not Howard Stern. You suck. Like, Howard Stern actually was talented. You suck, basically. So it's like. I blame yeah. it all. <laughs> And finally, uh, well, I don't know. Finally, you might have more, but I'm um, gotta say, rest in peace to Lisa Marie Presley. Oh no, I have that on my dead at 54 years old. Because she is a crazy thing, is she was just at the Golden Globes. That's, that's why I was tying this in because she was just yeah. Because um, they did a, as a biopic about Elvis, and she, her, and Priscilla were there like to support the actor. That um, I think the mm-hmm. guy won. That, um, he won. He did. Austin Butler. I'm looking at his name right now. Mm-hmm. And they were saying that when she was speaking, they said that she did seem a little bit like her speech was a little 
they said something seemed a little bit off, like when her when she was like talking and everything, and like that night, it's like she went into cardiac arrest, and it's yeah. like wow, like you just you just never know, like looking at somebody, like how close someone is to. Never like you could see somebody earlier in the day and then find out that they had they went to cardiac arrest and passed away the next day. Like it can be that quick. So uh flowers to Lisa Marie. Yeah, because she had a huge shell that she lived in, like your daughter of Elvis. I mean Yeah, quite the life. Daughter, <laughs> the daughter of Elvis. I mean, come on. Daughter of Elvis was, was married shell. to Michael Jackson. She didn't have quite the journey and shit. Nicholas Cage. Married later, to Nicholas like, Cage, who was like, like the biggest Elvis freak. They were, they were buried for like two weeks or something. That marriage never was barely lasted. <laughs> they were like barely, he barely married her married. because he's the biggest Elvis person. One of the biggest piece of Elvis memorabilia you can get, his daughter, yeah. I'm he was a, crazy. <laughs> He was crazy. <laughs> but yeah, and then her mom had a successful acting career. Priscilla, she had a successful naked gun. Always. Naked gun. Yeah, she did the naked gun movies. Played um, yeah, um, Drebin's um love interest. Yeah, love interest. Yeah. Shout out Nordberg, my favorite character from the movie. The less thing about that, the bad. <laughs> we'll let you shit on Nordberg. <laughs> gonna act like that didn't happen. Because he's so playful and so funny. I won't let you. Yeah. That's why he's why OJ couldn't play the Terminator when they, they were casting. He said, No one will believe OJ Simpson as a killer. Like, who's gonna believe that? <laughs> Fast forward a dec a decade later. <laughs> like, so like, you know, like yeah. No, no, the thing, uh, here's my mind drop. <laughs> when I was watching old uh footage of um the Flip Wilson show. Mm. On the last episode, Flip, you know, because Flip Wilson did Geraldine. And Geraldine always talked about her boyfriend, Killer, 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 and that they never showed. He was always just a character off, Jose the killer. off screen. And then on the last episode, they made Geraldine get married, but like Killer couldn't make it. Like he had like a prior prior get to there. His friend had to stand for him, and his friend was OJ Simpson. And I was like, so OJ Simpson stood in as a killer. Yeah. Mm hmm. So like this was this, what I was saying. This I was like, doing for years then. Yeah, OJ was stood in for the killer then. And then when they were casting Terminator, like um, OJ was one of the names they suggested, but then the, um, the casting said, nah, nobody will buy. Like OJ, that's like the quote, like Steph Curry and shit. Now, like I said, like, yeah. He, he, I won't say it's too dark. Should I? I'm no, gonna... don't say that. Don't <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Who did OJ kill again? His, his wife? Yeah. <laughs> no one would be like, that would be like the unbelievable line, thing. Just like, <laughs> Yeah, where you look at somebody oh, yeah. who just... I'm just saying, if all on that jury, I, just, I quit Steph Curry. No, <laughs> <laughs> now we getting dark and edgy. So on that note, I'm not with <laughs> that. And on a dark and edgy. You know, I just talked about dark and edgy, and I made a dark and edgy joke and shit. Mine was funny, though. I'm, I'm, I'm like Jamar Carmichael. <laughs> <laughs> See, so you laughing at that shit. You know what's funny. I can't. <laughs> Steph Curry, yeah, the Terminator. <laughs> yeah, he, Steph Curry with the shot, boy. Come on, like it writes itself, man. <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> I can't. It writes itself, man. <laughs> we tied all that shit in together. Steph Curry, Second Amendment. Come on, we cool. OJ, <laughs> let's wrap this shit up. <laughs> Nordberg, let's go, man. <laughs> We'll watch the naked gun tonight, so I see Nordberg. <laughs> I can't right now. All right, not another damn podcast episode 294. Oh, the tri state episode, we're gonna call it the tri state episode. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you like what we're doing? Give us a like on this tri state episode. Also, subscribe, share, rate, review all your platforms. I'm talking Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn, SoundCloud, iHeart, TLC Talk Radio. What's good, Tasha? Hey, Tasha. YouTube and your Amazon Alexa devices. Also, follow me at Ozman the Wizard on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Oz Radio on Snapchat and Facebook as well. You know how I do it. And you can check me out at MSI I'm 8626 on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Also, S C R A G U L L E Y 1 on Twitter, S C R A G U L L E Y 7 on Instagram. Also, please like the Straight Gully Facebook fan page. Check out straightgully.com for your blogs and your blogs and for your video production needs. Check out straightgullyproductions.com. I'm Ozman the Wizard. And Naima. We'll talk to you later. Bye. -bye. I'm gone.